Within Acumatica, it is easy to add a customer ID to easily find part numbers within the system without having to know what your internal part number is. So sometimes when you receive a purchase order from a client, it may have their information on there and you have to spend a lot of time trying to find it. The easiest way to set that up is if you're in Acumatica, go to inventory and then look up your stock item. So when my stock items load, I can easily find it within the system. So let's use this Acer laptop computer for our example. I'm gonna drill into here and since I have rights to change this item card, I'm gonna come all the way over to where it says cross-reference. And by clicking on the cross-reference, I can view all of the references that have been set up. You'll notice some are set up for barcodes, others are set up for vendor part numbers, and one's even been set up for a customer part number. So within here, the alternate type is what it is going to be set up for. So let's go ahead and set one of these up and talk through what they mean. By clicking on this add row button, it defaults to global. And global means this is a global cross-reference for the item. For this type, you do not need to specify a particular customer or vendor to use this reference. So you can use a global alternate ID on a sales order, an invoice, purchase order, purchase receipt, purchase request, purchase requisition, sales price worksheet, or vendor price worksheet. So we want ours to actually be a customer specific part number. So if I do a customer part number, that means that the alternate ID is going to be specific to a particular customer. So it is going to be relational. So the item that I put in will only work for the customer that I put in. Or, you know, we could also do the same logic for a vendor part number where a part number has to be tied to a specific vendor. Or if you use barcoding, um, that's where we would use barcoding. So let's move forward with customer part number. So let's go ahead and search and find the customer we're going to use this for. I'm going to pick USA Bartending School. And then for the alternate ID, this is what comes over to us to be able to enter that purchase order easily. So this is what the customer is referencing on their purchase order to buy our product. Our part number internally is the AA Compute 01, but the customer doesn't know what we call it. They only know what they call it. So we're going to give this one a name, and this is typically what is on your purchase order whenever it's coming over to you to enter into the system. So we'll do laptop 1A. And then if I tab over, the next field we have is unit of measure, and I'm going to sell this particular laptop 1A as in each, and then the description is going to be an Acer laptop for USA Bartend. Then all I have to do is hit save. And you'll notice that this is now put this into the list. I have customer part number for a Bartend, laptop 1A, unit of measure is each, and Acer laptop for USA Bartend is my cross-reference information. That does not change the item card, it only changes the cross-reference. So Let's dive into that and actually add this to a sales order now. So I can go into my sales orders, hit new sales order, enter my information. If I have a customer purchase order or whatever your company requires, I'm going to set this one up for USA bartending. That's the one we just set this up for. Tab through the defaults. And then let's do customer cross reference for our description. Now when I tab down into the main body of entering the sales order, for the inventory ID, I can use that same exact item that I just set up for the cross-reference. So as I type into the inventory ID, I could use my part number that we have set up internally, but I may not know it and I may not want to spend a lot of time trying to find it. Having that cross-reference set up really helps save you a lot of time because you can enter the same information that the customer has given you and have that match up nicely within Acumatica. So let's type in that part number that we just set up in the cross-reference of laptop 1A, and it's going to tell me no results found. We have that little frowny face, 
but I know we actually have a cross-reference set up for this one. So if I go ahead and tab over, you'll notice that that has switched the inventory ID to that AA Compute 01, and it's the Acer laptop computer. We scroll over or, you know, your alternate ID, if you have this moved around within the system, I actually like to keep mine up right by the actual part number to make it a little bit easier, but I wanted to show you that we can move these around. You'll see that this is the laptop 1A and my inventory ID is at AA Computer 1. If I ever need to check on it, I can just click into that inventory item look at all the attributes, click over into the cross-reference, and verify, yes, I did put the right thing on there. So let's go ahead and close this one off. Sometimes when we're entering a sales order, we may not have that cross-reference set up. So what I can easily do to do that on the fly is if I just go in and act like I'm going to add a line to the sales order, and let's do a part number that I have in my system, You'll notice I don't have an alternate ID set up. What I can do to easily make that relationship from right within the sales order is to set this up right here on the fly. So let's do coffee one, two, three as my alternate ID. And then if I save and tab through or, you know, change the pricing, whatever I need to do and hit save, that is going to create that cross reference. Now, if I wanted to just verify that, I could click into that item again go to that cross-reference page, I can see I have a customer part number set up for a bartend, coffee one, two, three, and each.